Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set Guide we have a special Demon Lord Archpriest build. This character build was requested by yet another one of my newest channel members. Thanks a lot for the extra support friend. The entire theme of the build is being an evil priest of an evil deity while also going for the demon mythic path. And we'll be following Rovagug, the apocalyptic god of destruction. Speaking about destruction, it is something our build will excel at. We have many attacks per round with pretty much one of the best weapons in the game that is even thematically appropriate as it is an axe of Rovagug. The demon path will provide lots of extra boosts to damage and attack rolls, which is even further enhanced by your very own divine spells as you'll be a full divine caster. Your criticals will be able to hit for higher than 1000 damage, 1300 even, together with normal hits that go for higher than 300. Cleric will also provide some unique domains that I will be picking for the first time through this build. For example, we have plus 10 damage from our destructive aura, yet another from battle rage, and even more from destructive smite. While your AC won't be anything special, you don't really need it, because for once you'll also be protected by your trusty centipede pet that will easily terrorize any enemies in your path and can, of course, tank for you with up to even 100 plus armor class. So without further ado, let us get into our Envoy of the End Demon Lord build. So for this build, we'll be going with Cleric, and then, personally, I would just keep to the default Cleric, but you can also go with Crusader if you prefer. Crusader has a lot of bonus feats, we have 5 total, something that Cleric is in desperate need of, as they don't have any bonus feat whatsoever. The main downside of Crusader is one less domain, which doesn't really matter much for this build, but also one less spell slot per level. This is somewhat annoying, as we aren't merging with Angel, we won't have an easy way of bypassing this outright. But you can just have another Divine Party member, let's say Darren, who is also evil aligned, so a perfect fit for this build and party. So the choice is up to you, I'll just pick the normal Cleric here. The other archetypes don't really matter much, Ecclesita Urge, I wouldn't bother because not having simple weapon proficiency early on is somewhat annoying for this character. For race, if you're not going with Crusader, then human is the way to go, because we then have an extra feat which is highly needed for this character. Otherwise, for Crusader, because of the overabundance of extra feats you have, you can go with any race you want. For the background, I'll be doing something different this time. Oblate and then Acolyte. It's the same background as Sociel. This lets your Wisdom modifier be applied instead of Charisma for Persuasion checks, which will come in handy very soon. Of course, if you already plan on having another party member to take care of Persuasion, you can just go with the classic Street Urchin and Pickpocket for higher initiative. But in the spirit of playing a Priest character for once, why not go with Acolyte? As far as ability points, Strength is still our main stat. We also want some Wisdom, and for that, we'll be dumping Charisma. That's the main reason we went for Acolyte. Charisma is going to be completely useless for this character, even as far as the channel energy uses, because you can only use it to damage enemies instead of healing allies. So now, go for 16 Wisdom. The rest we can easily get through gear. We just want the spells for the buffs, so we don't really need high Wisdom for DC or other stuff. Besides that, 12 Dexterity, and I would also go for 12 Constitution, then something you can do is dump Intelligence to 8 if you're going with Human, because you'll have 2 skill points anyways, even 3 at certain levels. And then start with 20 Strength, actually. As a Demon, you can increase your Strength even further through the major aspects, so this will become an even score later on. Also, with plus 5 to your Strength modifier, you'll have the maximum melee capabilities as early as level 1. For skill points, Lore Religion, because we are a priest, and I would also go with Persuasion, since we went for the Acolyte background. As far as your level 1 feats, the classic package for two-handers, and we are two-handing, Power Attack, and then Cleave to get two attacks just at level 1. I know I always speak it, but what can I say? Otherwise, your cleric will only have a second attack at level 8, which is way later. Understand that for the early game, it is in your best interest to go with Long Spears. We have simple weapon proficiency, so we can equip Long Spears with this character. Long Spears are rich weapons, which means you can attack the enemies from safety, even at the early levels, as to not have to worry about your AC. For Deity, this is pretty fun too. 
I'll be going with Rovagug, who is a god of destruction, doomsday, and all that fun. This way we can combine both flavor with gameplay power, because Rovagug also grants you weapon proficiency with great access for free. I suppose you already know where I'm going, but yes, we are equipping the Grave Singer Great X starting from around level 10 plus. If you don't want Rovaga, go with Lamash too, as she grants you Falchion proficiency for free. Falchions are great weapons overall too, because of their high critical range. We can only pick channel negative energy, which is rather subpar compared to healing, because it doesn't do much damage to enemies. Now for your domain selection, if you went with Rovagug, War is a must-have. The Battle Rage ability by itself is pretty good. You can apply a damage boost to any character equal to half your class level, so plus 10. Untyped, so stacks with everything else. It only has a very small duration of one round, but later through Mythic Progression we'll get to apply this as a swift action, as you retain the ability to perform all of our attacks together with this. Also, you'll even get a bonus combat feat at level 8, which a cleric really could use. For the second domain, Destruction is the best choice. It's quite fitting for our build since we worship Rovagug, and the abilities are decent as well. Destructive Smite has limited uses per day, but can increase your damage rolls and attack rolls too, by quite a massive amount. Half your class levels, just like Battle Rage, except this one is Morale, so it's not untyped. And is limited to just one attack per use, while Battle Rage works for all of your attacks for one round. So even just at level 1 or the early levels, we'll already have multiple ways from domain abilities and cleric spells, of increasing our attack bonus to the max to ensure we hit the enemy, especially when you consider we start with 20 strength. It doesn't go any higher than that. Anyways, you still have another ability, Destructive Aura. It creates an aura around you that will enhance the damage everyone inside you receive, both allies and enemies, by bonus equal to half your character's levels, so at max level plus 10, and also automatically confirm all critical hits. Now, this might seem like a penalty, but honestly, your character is just way more powerful than the enemies overall, especially this build. For alignment, you might as well go with Chaotic Evil, I mean, it's a demon alignment, we are an evil priest of an evil god. Every level and then, if you start with 8 intelligence as a human, you'll get a bonus skill point, you can put it anywhere you want. I'll just be going for use magic device, even if we have a charisma penalty, because it's easy to increase through gear boosts and buffs, and you don't need it to be high, unlike other skills. For level 3, the classic living finish, having 3 potential attacks just at level 3, well, to me, it's really good. At level 4, be sure to increase strength, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. Remember, for wisdom, you just have gear. For level 5, peak combat reflexes, the main reason is we don't have space for it later on, so we kinda have to pick it now. Also, because this character will be equipping either the Grave Singer Great Axe or Falchions, we have massive critical range, so later through the outflank feat we'll get lots of extra attacks of opportunity, and this will enhance them. Now, before leveling your character up to level 7, be sure to take the first level into Mythic Progression so we can get a pet, and this time we'll be going for a very fun and thematic one. So after leveling your first Mythic for the pet, go with Boom Companion so that our Centipede pet can fully scale to our level. For level 8 we have a bonus feat because of the War domain, and of course we want Outflank, just one level later than the norm. For level 9, Lunge is the way to go, Reach is amazing, especially since we cannot ride our poor centipede to avoid getting hit in combat, so Reach is the way to overcome that. For level 11, the classic, Improved Critical, and then either Great Axe or Falchion, depending on what you picked. At this point, you can already craft the Grave Singer Crusade Relic weapon, and I have a guide for how to do it, should decide here or in the pinned comments down below. For level 13, well, you have two choices now, you can get started into the Shattered Defenses package, so Weapon Focus, then Dazzling Display at 15, and Shattered Defenses at 17. You'll be getting it a little bit later than my other builds, which pick it at 15. It's just that this character as a demon, and because of all of the ways we have of further increasing our AB, I don't think we need Shattered Defenses so early, plus we don't really have the feats to spare. On the other hand, you can also rush for Improved Initiative now, and then delay Shattered Defenses for level 19. The main advantage of this is that this way, you'll be able to get Mythic Initiative way earlier, which is what I prefer doing. So for level 15 onwards is when I would finally get into the Shattered Defenses package, starting with Focus into your weapon. For 17, Dazzling Display. And for 19, Shattered Defenses at last. Yes, late game, but 
like I said, we have a lot of buffs to overcome it. Plus, at this point is when you are fighting most of the Demon Lords anyway, so just in time. Alright, now let us cover Mythic progression for our Demon Lord Archpriest build. For the first ascension, the class is close to the Abyss, we are going the Demon Path after all. This extra gore attack will also work as soon as you equip your Grave Singer Great Axe, because it's not a rich weapon. For your first mythic ability, Impossible Domain, and I would personally go with Animal Pets, are amazing. And I wanted to go with a new pet this time, one that's very fitting for this build. The Giant Centipede. Rovagug Sacred Animal is a Scorpion, we don't have that, the Centipede is the closest one. It's not that the Centipede is a bad pet, it's just that, well, I'll be blunt, it's not as strong as the top pets, which are the Boar, the Dog and the Wolf. Anyways, the Centipede is certainly viable and very fun. The main downside is that you cannot ride the Centipede unlike all of the other pets. It's somewhat sad for our build, but we have the Lunge Feed for Reach, we also have side spells for even more reach, even with the Grave Singer or Falchion weapons, which aren't rich weapons. So in a way, it's not like we'll be at danger of getting hit in melee much. Plus, your Centipede pet can certainly tank for you. The poison ability it has is kinda disappointing overall, because, well, demons are immune to poison by default, so at most you'll be poisoning cultists and so on. Amusingly enough, this is the only pet that does not have an intelligence score. This is actually an upgrade over the other pets. Yep, it is. By not having intelligence and being a vermin, it means the centipede is immune to mind-affecting abilities, so no chances of getting it charmed or confused against your own characters. Second, it is the pet that surprisingly enough has the highest skill points per level, 4, so that it can specialize into all of its class skills. Also, it automatically has access to all of the teamwork feats, unlike the other pets that have to get at least 3 intelligence, so overall, it's a pretty fun and powerful pet. For Mythic level 2, I would rather pick an extra Mythic ability, in this case, Domain Zealot. Being a Zealot is quite fitting for an Evil Priest, I believe, plus this ability will come in handy when it comes to turning our Battle Rage War Domain power into a swift action, so we can pretty much always activate it and still retain the use of all of our full attacks for the round. Plus it will also help other Domain abilities we'll be picking eventually. Now, you can also ignore Domain Zealot and... There are many ways of building this character from now onwards, depending on what other party members you have and what they'll be doing for you. For example, I recommend you go with Darren, this way you have someone that can provide divine spells, while also having a lot of spells lost from abundant casting, and later permanent buffs from enduring spells. This way you don't have to bother with that, leave them for Darren, and fully focus into melee instead. You might also want more domains at once, or you can just have social for that, or not even pick all of the other domains, I mean, if you are on unfair, I suppose, you might want to consider community, and at the very least also madness, for the huge bonuses to attack rolls that can grant your whole party. For core and hard it's not really necessary, and like I said, you can just have social do it. And yes, even a party of an evil cleric, social and Darren would still be optimal, because all of these characters are powerful on their own. Anyways, I've already done a Domain Cleric before, so I want you to take this build in a different path now, which is why I want you to take advantage of the synergy between our War Domain ability with Domain Zealot as early as we can. For Mythic Level 3, the classic Everred, you absolutely must have it, we are going for Falchions or the Grave Singer after all. For Mythic Level 4, the classic Improved Critical, and then your weapon of choice. Now, for your first demonic aspect, please remember that I already have a full demon guide where I explain each one in depth, so for now I'll keep this simple. You also have two choices depending on your party members. I'm all about giving you options. If you have a Scald to provide the Pounce ability, so your character can charge and full attack, then Kalavakus is the best one for the extra attack it will give you. On the other hand, if you don't have a Scald party member, go with Succubus first. Succubus aspect won't really enhance your AB or damage, but will grant all of your party members immunity to mind-affecting effects, which are very annoying. Well, compulsion and fear effects, which are basically most of the mind-affecting ones. Plus, Succubus will also reduce the attack rolls of enemies, so works as a way of reducing your chances of getting hit or that of your tanks and centipede pet. For Mythic level 5. Two choices, Mythic Charge if you have a Scald, since we also just picked Kalavaku's aspect before. Otherwise, Mythical Beast to start granting bonuses to your Centipede pet. There's always Last Stand too, 
But if you aren't on Unfair, I don't think it's needed so early. Otherwise, you might as well have picked it at Mythic 2. And remember, you can go for other impossible domains as well. For a second demonic aspect, Shear is the way to go for both the bonus to attack rolls and also the powerful charge ability, so now we have bonuses to charge from Kalavakus, Shear and Mythic Charge. For the first major aspect, the classic, Baylor to share your main rage bonuses with all allies automatically, and Vavakir for the huge bonus to strength. Baylor is the one you want to have on, however. For Mythic level 6, Mythic Power Attack. For another demon aspect, because you can only apply 3 at the same time at Mythic 8, the ones you'll be picking now are just for the extra bonus to skills, which are automatically applied, regardless of them being on or off. For this case, go with Rock for the bonus to Religion, as we already have UMD from Sheer. For Mythic 7, Mythical Beast at last. And then Shadow Demon for the bonus to Wisdom. The other lesser aspects do not matter, just go with Incubus, so that you can turn it on together with Sheer and Kalavakus at Mythic 8. For Mythic level 8, Mythic Initiative. If you only pick Improved Initiative at level 19, I'm afraid you won't be able to get it at Mythic 8, you'll have to wait until Mythic 10. For Mythic level 9, well, either an impossible domain, of choice, to me it's just a classic last stand, just in case, especially for the first DLC where enemies are super stacked. For your first major aspect, as always you have two choices, Pazuzu for the extra attack per round, which even stacks with haste, but I believe Nocticula is more efficient overall, because she lets you apply all the rage bonuses, including the aspects, unlike Baylor, to one ally of choice for free whenever you rage. As far as Mythic 10, you can pick anything you want here. Well, at this point, you might as well go for another domain. In this case, Luck Domain, because Divine Fortune is a very handy ability to have. It works pretty much the same way as the Fortune Hex from Witch or Shaman, except we have multiple uses of it per day, and will work for one minute since we are at max level now. For the last Demon Lord aspect, Pazuzu, since we picked Nocticula before. Alright, now let's get into gear for our Demon Lord Archpriest. For the amulet, the classic Velex is magnifying for as high strength as possible, but earlier just the rare amulets that increase initiative. We don't need armor, so just settle for Chainmail of Camaraderie for the extra boost against flanked targets. For the shirts, just the usual Wandering Command, for the bonus to attacks of opportunity, and Gravesinger excels at that, the same as Falchions. For belts, at first belts that increase strength, then either strength and dexterity or constitution, depending on what you prefer. Ultimately, either the Mangling Frenzy, as you can rage even without a scald, to increase your critical hit damage, and we have very high critical hit chance, or just belts of physical perfection plus 6. For gloves, as any two-hander, Fencer's Gift for the extra boost to damage. For boots, either boots of Stampede for higher charge damage, or I suppose you can go for Ronex Sacrifice even though you aren't a dexterity build. For helmets, early on, headbands of wisdom, but eventually just ahead of the bitter end as usual for the bonus on kills. And then you can combine it with the Broken Trickster for the extra boost to wisdom. For cloaks, the classic for demons at first resistance with the highest modifier, ultimately the demon special cloak, to get even higher bonuses. For rings is the usual package for two-handers, triumphant advance. For double morale bonuses, this ring will become even stronger at the next patch, so just you wait. And demon and demise for the extra boost to two-handed melee attacks. For the bracers, they don't matter much. You might as well go for abrupt onslaught late game for the bonus to sneak attack, which we get for free, or just the lucky bracers that you start the game with. Now let us cover weapons and quick slots. For weapons, Grave Singer, of course, is ideal, and like I said, it is a weapon of Rovagug, our god. If you're wondering about all these extra properties, please check out my How to Enchant and Upgrade Your Weapons to the Max guide to the side here or in the pinned comment down below. Now, early game, so for chapter 1 and 2, don't forget to go with Long Spears instead for the Reach property, and of course, you can go with Falchions as well if you prefer while worshipping Lamashtu. As far as quick slots, the lucky dice for minor bonuses, Jarsigax for extra elemental damage, the Signet of House Vespertilio, mostly to increase lore religion as a priest, extend metamagic rods for any divine and demon buff, since we don't get enduring spells with this character, a greater quicken rod is mostly here to quicken mass heal. Even if you are an evil priest, you can still heal your allies and shoot because of how useful mass heal is. Of course, you can also use scrolls if you want to use magic device. Be careful with transformation though, while you can set your base attack bonus to the max, like a fighter, 
which also results in another attack per round and more bonuses to damage from power attack, it will block domain use, which is kind of annoying for this build. Well, so this was it for my Envoy of the End Demon Lord Archpriest build. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member, which will let you request videos just like this, just for you. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.